All right, welcome everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. So my name is Katrin Yu, and I'm one of the um, space scientists here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And how many of you are here for the first time? Raise your hand. Okay, it seems like we have a pretty significant um, fraction who are um, new to this. But welcome to 60 Minutes in Space. And what this program is about is um, <coughs> scientists here at the museum uh, present um, some news stories that you might have heard about um, in the press, uh, or if you um, like to surf online, um, just um, learn about astronomy news. But what we do is we try to um, go into a little bit more um, in depth about these stories than you would find um, just from a press release or an online article. And normally I split my duties with Dr. Steve Lee, who is a planetary scientist. He's a Mars expert, and I handle all the astronomy and astrophysics, but um, Steve is out of town tonight, so I'll be going solo. And so with that, um, I have a lot to cover. And if you do have a burning question, um, you can feel free to wave your hands and try to get my attention. But I'll um, save all the um, Q&A for the end. So with that, um, let's go ahead and get started. And some of you, you might remember from a couple years ago, there was an announcement that the closest star to our solar system, to our sun, Proxima um, Centauri, um, had a planet that was discovered around it. So this is um, Proxima Centauri B, and this is an artist's um, conception of what the surface might look like. Um, and the um, star Proxima um, Centauri is a red dwarf, meaning it's much, much less massive than our sun. And so it's not only much smaller, but um, it also produces a lot less energy. And so it's dimmer and redder. And this is actually an, um, an, an artist's um, animation showing what um, one of these red dwarf stars might look like. Um, it appears really dark because um, these stars are known to have uh, significant star spots. Uh, our sun has sunspots, but um, as you go to the super small stars, they tend to have spots that cover a significant portion of their surface. And the other thing about these stars is that even though they're less massive, they can be um, also more active. And by activity, I mean um, they can send out flares. So you've probably heard about solar flares. And um, oh, um, can we turn off the lights or turn down the lights? <coughs> so you've probably heard about, um, whoa. <laughs> let's, let's flip the other way. Um, turn on the audience lights since uh, the audience, yes, thank you very much, Tim. Um, so um, stars. Um, can um, be very active, and um, solar flares are one indication of that for our, um, for our sun. But um, flares um, can be extremely powerful for um, these um, lower mass um, red stars. And in fact, um, we've detected flares that are actually many times, tens of times, uh, more powerful than the flares that we see around um, that, that have been emitted from, from our sun. So the question is, um, can um, flares from Proxima Centauri be dangerous for Proxima Centauri B, the planet? Because we know that um, this particular planet is um, close to the size of the Earth, and um, it's at, at the right distance, mean, uh, meaning it's much closer um, than our Earth is to our sun, for it to potentially have liquid water on its surface if all the other conditions are, are right. Well, um, there was a series of observations from the Alma Telescope um, in Chile, and um, they detected a, um, a flare um, from um, the star. And this is not the observation. This is another artist's um, painting. And what they found was a flare that was a 1,000 times brighter at its peak than the, um, the star um, at its normal um, luminosity when it wasn't flaring. And so what this means is that um, given the, um, the fact that um, a flare like this, um, something like this is so powerful, um, could show up just um, within the several weeks that they were able to observe the star, and they weren't observing continuously, um, suggests that um, these um, type of flares, which if I remember right, is on the order of about, um, let's see, 10 times uh, brighter um, than the flares that we see from the sun, but since the planet is orbiting about 20 times um, closer to um, the star, that means the, the amount of um, radiation that this planet um, is getting is um, on the order of hundreds of times um, more than anything that we would get from our sun. 
And so this suggests that if life was to ever evolve, or if it had evolved um, on this planet, it um, probably would have been sterilized relatively quickly um, because of the flaring from the star.